Well, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Mr. Lemoyne. I'm a teacher up in Portland, Oregon, and you can see behind me here is our um, is our future bus. One of the things that I do in my school district is I'm a driver for the future bus. It's a converted school bus that um, is a maker space, a mobile maker space. And we drive it out to schools and do all kinds of fun things with um, with classrooms. It's being currently during the pandemic. It's being currently used as a um, as a mobile library. So let's get started with our uh, with our book here. I've got a really fun and interesting book for you guys here today. I think you'll I think you'll agree. We're going to read the book called The Hidden World of Toilets. The Hidden World of Toilets. So let's uh, let's get started with this this great volume here. Um, so this is actually there's a book. This is a book that that has a lot of math concepts in it. And so um, I'm not going to read the math problems in the book, but um, I encourage you to pause the video and check out some of the uh, the math challenges that we've got in the book. So if you want, you can pause the video now and check out those math talk questions. So here's our table of contents. We're going to learn about the history of toilets. We're going to learn about um, toilets around the world. We're going to learn about toilets out in space. We're going to learn about toilets all um, in developing nations and then thinking about toilets um, in the future as well. So toiling toilets. It is estimated that we spend over one and a half hours on toilets each week. That adds up to almost 92 days over a lifetime. We have a pretty serious relationship with our toilets, but do we take them for granted? Our toilets toil away for us every day, yet they get little thanks for their hard work. At first glance, a toilet is a simple device. It's designed to get rid of human waste. That's it, that's all. However, toilets are critical devices for proper sanitation. Many people view their time on the porcelain throne as a regular part of their day. However, this is not the case for everyone. Across the globe, there are still 2.4 billion people who, who do not have access to toilets. This is a critical global issue, and it is a cause that the United Nations or the UN is supporting. Clean toilets for developing countries should be a worldwide priority, but the global community needs to work together to make that happen. Perhaps you have never thought much about toilets, but they have a colorful history. When you think of toilets, you probably picture the one in your home, but Toilets can be very different around the world. Now let's dive deep into the hidden world of toilets. So there's some pictures over here, you guys, of, um, of some different toilets. This first one, these ancient toilet artifacts are on display in a museum in Greece. This weathered outhouse sits by a path in New England in the United States. And this medieval toilet is located in the castle of Zativia in Spain. I'm not sure if I pronounced that right. I have not been to Spain before. A whirling history. Throughout history, people have had to deal with human waste. The modern solution is to flush that waste down the toilet. Sewage systems then drag it all far, far away. But the flushing toilet wasn't always the go-to solution. Over the years, the toilet has taken on many shapes and forms. So who gets credit for creating the toilet? Ancient Rome. So the toilet's origin story is murky. There is evidence that people from Scotland or Greece may have built the world's first restrooms, but the ancient Romans built the best aqueducts. Aqueducts are pipe systems that transport water to large cities. They're a great way to import water from faraway sources. The Romans built many bathhouses and communal restrooms. These were large structures that housed long benches where people could sit and, quote, do their business, unquote. Rome once had 144 latrines and communal restrooms throughout the city. However, the Romans did not entirely understand good hygiene. People could not simply buy toilet paper at a Roman market. Instead, Romans used a communal sponge on a stick to clean themselves. Unfortunately, this practice spread bacteria from person to person. So here's an illustration down in the bottom left. This illustration shows a 19th century Roman with servants in a communal bathroom. And then over here on the right, these are public latrines in ancient Rome. And here's a short movie about public latrines in ancient Rome. So let's give this one a look. This is a video of the public latrines in ancient Rome. And then here's one of those examples I told you guys about the let's explore math. And so I'm not going to read these math problems, but again, I encourage you to pause the video. And so you can check out these, um, these math problems on your own. England. 
Before flush toilets and restrooms, people turned to chamber pots to do their business. These containers were used as portable toilets. People often kept them under their beds. In medieval England, most people used these age old chamber pots, but the evolution of the toilet made its next leap in a bigger way. During this time, the guard robe officially entered the toilet world. It was a unique and smelly addition to castle homes. Guard robes are small rooms tucked into the sides of castles. They can be seen sticking out from the castles. People would go into the room to do their business. Then the guard robe used gravity to funnel waste away. Some later castles even had guard robes that emptied into the castle's moat. So what makes a guard robe so special? Think about the buildings in your city. Most of them have toilets and the architects who designed the buildings likely thought about where to put the toilet first. But medieval England marked the first time and place architects thought about where the toilet should go. So here's a, uh, an antique chamber copper chamber pot. And then down on the bottom left here is the interior of the guard robe at Skipton Castle in England. And then over on the upper right here is the guard robe at Bowman's Castle in Great Britain and it sticks out of the wall. And here's another let's explore math problem if you wanted to pause the video. The birth of the flush toilet. In 1596, the world's first flush toilet was made by Sir John Harrington. He was the godson of Queen Elizabeth I. He had an idea for a new toilet. His idea used a bowl filled with water from an upstairs cistern or tank. Human waste was flushed away when the bowl's pipe valve was released. The queen had this modern water closet installed in her Richmond home. However, the flush toilet was years away from being a popular household device. Harrington's invention needed 7.5 gallons or 28 liters of water to flush away waste. That's a lot of water. Most people in the 16th century would not have wanted to waste this much water. Today's toilets use less than two gallons or eight liters of, flush, of water per flush. The first flush toilet offered to the public was made by Thomas Crapper. Yep, that's his real name. In 1851, Crapper showcased his toilet at the Great Exhibition in London. This display proved to be a great marketing method. It made his business a success. Crapper then went on to design a line of toilets. They were a huge hit with the public. The flush toilet quickly became a common sight all over the world. So up here is a picture of Sir John Harrington. And then we can see Thomas Crapper down in the bottom here. And then here's a pretty fancy looking one. This is a painted toilet from 1880. And then this advertisement for Thomas Crapper's new toilet is from his 1902 catalog. And then here's another let's explore math problem. So again, if you want to pause the video for a bit, you can, um, you can check out that math problem. The ins and outs. Flush toilets go through a rigorous workout every day, but... Do you know what goes on behind that porcelain shell? Your everyday toilet is hiding a pretty intricate interior. Take a look inside to see how everything works. The bowl and siphon. The toilet has several parts that work together to make human waste disappear. First, there's the toilet bowl. This is the most important part of the whole toilet. It has one crucial design purpose, to never allow the water inside to overflow. Notice the S-shaped pipe that leaves the toilet bowl. This is the toilet siphon. When you flush a toilet, water flows into the bowl to wash away waste, odor, and germs. The siphon's job is to make sure that the bowl always has the same level of water. As water runs into the bowl, the siphon tube fills. The siphon then acts quickly, sucking the extra water out of the toilet bowl. This creates that flush noise that people know and love. Even if you pour several, several gallons of water in a toilet bowl, it will never overflow. This is helpful in, present, in preventing restroom floods. And so here you can see a nice diagram of that toilet. So here's the bowl, the tank, and that siphon that they were talking about here, and then the outflow. The flush and refill. A tank sits above each toilet bowl. Inside the tank are tubes and valves submerged in water. The tank of water is what jump starts the flush in the toilet bowl. When you push a toilet's handle, you're actually pulling a chain that opens the flush valve. The flush valve in the tank of water opens and floods the toilet bowl. 
over a gallon or four liters of water is released into the bowl, filling the siphon tube to flush away human waste. This all happens in a few seconds. You've probably noticed you can't flush a toilet immediately after the first flush. This is because the tank of the water needs to refill. The toilet tank has a mechanism called a ball float. This piece hovers on top of the water in the tank. When the tank of water empties, the ball drops. This signals the refill valve that the tank is low on water. The refill valve then begins slowly refilling the tank with water, which also raises the ball float. Once the ball float returns to its original location, the refill valve knows the tank is filled with enough water to complete its next flush. And just like that, the toilet is ready for use once again. And so here's the flushing mechanism, and this shows all of that parts that we just, uh, that we just read about. And there's another uh, let's explore math problem down here if you want to pause the video. Global toilets. Toilets around the world come in all shapes, colors, and sizes. Many countries have modern toilets that range from simple to wacky. Let's take a worldwide road trip as we take a look at toilets from around the globe. The unique London Loo. This is a great one. This is one of my favorites. Don't Miss a Sec was installed in 2004. This London restroom sat right in the bustle of a crowded street. Monic Bonvinci designed this unique loo. Loo is the British word for restroom or toilet. One-way mirrors surround the toilet. This means no one can see in, but users can see out. This gives users the chance to watch passerby while on the toilet. Bonvinci's idea was that even if you had to go to the restroom, you could still watch the action outside the structure. Still, it takes a brave soul to use this toilet. The Porcelain Palace in China. China lays claim to the world's largest restroom, and you can find it in the city of Chongqing. It is housed in a building that is four stories tall and has over 1,000 toilets. The building, has, the building has been called the Porcelain Palace. So here's a picture of the... Um, from the inside of Don't Miss a Sec, that, that see-through toilet in London, see-through from the inside. And here's from the outside, so you can see it just looks, it's mirrored on the outside of the Don't Miss a Sec loo. And then here, visitors admire elephant-shaped sinks at Chong Ching's public restroom. And here's a, uh, an overhead view of the Porcelain Palace. And then here's a, uh, a Let's Explore Math Problem based on Monica Bonvinci's um, Don't Miss a Sec loo toilet in London. Two choices in Japan. If you travel to Japan, you will likely stumble upon two types of toilets, Japanese style and Western style. Japanese style toilets are also known as squat toilets. Common in Asian countries, squat toilets function the same as toilets in Western countries. However, you squat instead of sit. Squat toilets are the most common type of toilet found in public restrooms in Japan. That's because they're often cheaper to make and easier to clean. The Western, toilet the Western style toilet is Japan's take on the modern toilet, but the Japanese version comes with a few more bells and whistles. There's a button panel beside the toilet. Users have many choices to make sure their bottoms are extra clean. They can choose from several different water spray options. Hmm. They can also choose how much water is needed to flush waste away. Water temperature controls are, off, are offered for maximum comfort. There's also a fan that dries away water residue. Bottoms are left feeling squeaky clean and people don't need as much toilet paper. That's not all. Some electronic toilets even have heated seats and play music. That's pretty fancy. So here's a, um, in Japan, squat toilets are built into the floor. Have to be, have some pretty strong legs to use that one, huh? And then the Western style toilet. So this is one of the ones in Japan with all those extra things on it. Out of this world toilets. Astronauts have an out of this world time when they head into space, but they still need restroom breaks when they're orbiting the globe. So how exactly does a toilet work in space? Toilets on earth rely on gravity and the fact that all things are pulled downward. But in space, things are different. Everything floats up and away, including waste. Luckily, the solution is simple. Space toilets use vacuums to suck away waste. When astronauts need to urinate, they use a funnel attached to a tube. 
This funnel is made for both men and women. The tube is attached to the toilet. A vacuum sucks the liquid down, down the tube and into the toilet. Astronauts don't need to sit to use the tube. They can stand or even hang upside down. Uh, that'd be an adventure. Sometimes astronauts need to sit down to do their business. Each sit down toilet comes equipped with foot straps and a thigh bar to prevent users from floating away. Astronauts just need to make sure there's a strong seal between their bodies and the toilet. Otherwise, the toilet's vacuum won't work. Does that sound complicated? That's why astronauts attend toilet training before leaving for space. And here's a picture of uh, the space shuttle toilet. Here's a picture of astronauts, um, a picture captioned astronauts on the International Space Station use toilets similar to this display. And again, here's another math problem if you wanna pause the uh, pause the video. This math, math problem is based on, um, on the um, astronauts toilets. Toilets in developing nations. Users can choose from a large variety of toilets. One thing they have in common though is price. Toilets all cost money. Many of them are artistic, modern wonders, but these toilets do not come cheap. The cost of a Japanese style electronic toilet seat starts at about $150. A NASA space toilet can cost up to $30 million. Even a normal toilet will cost at least $130. And what about people in countries that can't afford these hefty price tags? Modern toilets need clean water to work and good plumbing systems to flush out waste. For residents in developed countries, trips to the toilet are part of a daily routine. Yet, this is not the case for more than 2.4 billion people around the globe. One out of every three people in the world do not have safe and clean toilets to use. In Nigeria, about seven out of 10 people do not have access to clean toilets. That is over 130 million people. Instead, many people defecate in the open. They use public fields, lakes, or side streets. They often have no other choice. Even if there's a toilet for them to use, it is often dirty or poorly made. This condition spreads germs and disease. So up here on the left, um, herdsmen in the trans Alai mountain range in Asia set up this toilet with sheets and wooden boards. People in the Australian outback use tall metal sheets and a plastic barrel to build this toilet. In the third picture here, people in Zambia tied branches to brush to make this public toilet. And then finally, people in Mumbai, India made this toilet out of recycled scraps. And here's a map um, down on the bottom right here, the globe showing uh, Africa and the location of Nigeria, one of the countries in Africa. Clean toilets are central to a person's health. Waste is full of bacteria. Toilets quickly take bacteria away from paces away from places where people live, breathe, drink, and eat. Without toilets, bacteria spreads. Bacteria can enter food and drinking water and drinking water, and they can become contaminated. They can make people sick. People may even die. The UN sees the value of clean and safe toilet access. That is why it has made clean toilets its sixth sustainable development goal. Its plan is for everyone around the world to have access to toilets by the year 2030. To make this goal a reality, the UN established World Toilet Day in 2013. World Toilet Day builds awareness. It is observed each year on November 19th. This day is spent encouraging people to take action. Support is shown for those around the world or in need of help. So what can you do to help? Talk about the value of clean toilets. Toilets are often a taboo topic. People don't like to talk about them. However, people can't help solve problems when they don't know the problems exist. So down on the bottom left here is a picture showing um, the members of the United Nations meet to discuss World Toilet Day. And then the picture on the right here, a group of people in New York are some of the first to observe World Toilet Day in 2014. Toilets for tomorrow. Engineers are working to solve other problems with waste. Toilets still use about two gallons or eight liters of water per flush. Engineers are working to reduce this amount. In 2012, a team began working on a new type of toilet. A composting toilet sucks water out of the waste. The toilet then turns the waste into fertilizer. 
This fertilizer can be added to the soil of trees and gardens to help them grow. Best of all, the toilet uses about 0.2 gallons or one liter of water per flush to work. This saves a lot of water. This level, this level of change will take time. Change can happen when everyone pitches in. New toilet technology can help too. Awareness and innovation will hopefully change the world one toilet at a time. So here we see a picture of this nano membrane toilet is being developed to clean waste at home. And then finally over here on the right, this is a composting toilet in Arizona. So I, I hope you learned a little bit about um, toilets um, from this, this book, you guys. And perhaps the next time you sit down on a toilet, you might think a little deeper than, uh, than you have the last time you sat down to take care of business. All right. Thanks for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed the book.